Hello everyone and welcome to my first painting video tutorial. This is part one of how to paint a Sylvaneth Tree Lord Ancient. Hope you enjoy it. I've put together a quick conversion chart here for the colours I've used in this video into the Games Workshop range of paints. So I've already cleaned up and assembled the uh, model into little sub-assemblies mounted on cocktail sticks for easy uh, access and with the airbrush it's just easier to do bits in pieces and then put it together towards the end. Uh, I've just taken an old brush here and just given it a little, little dust over just to take off any grainy overspray just to make sure we get a nice smooth surface for our airbrushing. Of course don't be too aggressive with the brushing, you don't want to snap off any detail, especially the little leaves and horns. Alright that looks good, let's get started with the base coats from the airbrush. I start out by applying a base tone of Vallejo Game Air Khaki across pretty much the entire model, um, focusing obviously on all the, the wood areas. Um, you can ignore the spirity sort of parts, which I think are actually meant to be wood, but I've, I've gone a different way and painted it sort of a ghost spirit effect, which you'll see a bit later on in the video. I've left the tips of the branches and the top sort of area of the leaves um, just white because I'm actually going to do them a lighter colour. And again the same with the face, uh, leave sort of the top area of the, the branchy horns uh, white because they're going to be a lighter colour anyway. You want to make sure you get a nice even base coat across all of the uh, the bark areas and as you can see using an airbrush to do this is very quick and you get great coverage uh, and obviously no no brush marks from using sort of slightly thicker coloring sort of base coats like dark browns and, although this one's a bit of a lighter brown but it's got great coverage see it's actually uh, quite hard to keep the model um, in sort of the middle of the camera shot and um, the setup I'm using at the moment it's kind of difficult to get a good angle while being able to see what I'm doing whether it's actually covering the model correctly or not make sure you get all of the hand and knuckles here you can ignore the fingers because we're gonna paint those black later on I have since recorded a Star Drake how to paint video and I'm much better the second time round of holding it in shot um, is something I'll just get used to as I progress and do more videos. Don't forget the loincloth, uh, make sure you get all the the leafy bark looking bits on the front and the back. Um, you can ignore obviously the webbed pattern on the front because we'll, uh, we'll paint that later on.
I went ahead and painted the lower part of the model just off camera quickly. Um, the entire bottom half has been painted with the, uh, the same base colour. Using Vallejo Game Air Charred Brown, I've started to base down the, the shades on the sort of lower half of the model and trying to get in underneath to give it some more some more shadow. This is quite a nice, rich, reddy sort of brown. Uh, goes goes really well on this uh, on this color scheme. A similar color you could use here is a uh, burnt amber. It's a similar sort of tone. Um, it's also quite sort of a rich brown as well. You want to just hit the lower parts of the branch horns uh, now, and sort of under the the jaw or the face, and um, leave the centre of the face quite light. And obviously, don't go too far up the horns because you want to see like a nice transition up to the the bone right at the tips. You can see I'm going from the front to the back of the uh, the model. Uh, this is because you don't want to keep spraying over the same area repeatedly. Um, give it give it a chance to dry a little bit. Go back to the other side. Put on another transition, then another layer. Flip it back round. Same again. Build up the layer slowly. Um, you don't want to have to start again. So less is more here. And again, make sure you just sort of hit the lower side of the, 
the leafy bark bits here just to um, give it a bit more shadow and depth and remember to, uh, to do the back as well. Ideally here, you just want to hit the bottom parts of the hands and the fingers. Uh, later on you can always apply more colour from the top using the lighter highlight to sort of remedy any um, extreme shadows you put in. Here I hold the model's arm as if it was in the position it would be when it's on the model itself um, and then applied uh, shadows to the undersides of the arm. And then the same with the other arm. I apply more of the charred brown to the bottom half of the leg plates on each leg, the feet, uh, around the uh, 
the bottom of the sort of top leg plates and then obviously underneath at the back as well. I've gone ahead and boosted the speed of this bit of the uh, the bit of the project. This is quite a lot of the model here, so there's a lot of, uh, of shades to put down. So it will be going pretty quick. Using Vallejo Game Air Bone White, I apply highlights to the face and the tips of the horn bones. This highlight may actually be quite hard to see in the video. Um, it is there, um, you just have to take my word for it. You'll, you'll notice it in, when I go over some of the darker areas, but um, yeah, it's doing bone and white is it's not the easiest to show sometimes. And make sure you get the back of the horns as well.
and go ahead and highlight the top of the leaves and that little branch bit that's sticking out just to the side there. Highlight the top of the arm with the same bone white. As I previously just mentioned, it's actually quite hard to see this bone white going on at the moment. Um, again, just take my word for it, it is there. Highlight the tops of the bone horns and the branches again, and a tiny little bit towards the top middle of the chest plate as well. You can also take this opportunity to just hit the little leaves at the top as well, so then when we apply our base coat to them later on, the leaves towards the top of the model will be a, a little bit lighter. Try and hit the sort of back plate of the hand here and the tops of the fingers. Um, the fact that the fingers have the ridges sticking out will actually sort of help highlight and shade as you spray these on. Um, you can sort of see here I've, I've taken a, a lot of the darkness off the top um, where I originally put down a shade in the wrong place um, during the first part of the uh, recording. I'm just hitting the tops of each leg plate here, front and back, um, and the tops of the feet a little bit, and then the the top of the sort of the the crotch plate area, I guess it is. Um, you don't need to worry too much about the spirity areas again; um, they will be painted by by hand shortly afterwards. I have since played with the lighting of the video and taken the gain down a little bit. Um, this will help in future videos show the white and bone and cream colours a bit better. So here you can see all of the uh, bark pieces all highlighted and shaded and uh, ready to apply the next colours. Uh, I stick them all into a little foam block like this so I don't lose any pieces while I'm working on a project. So I've mixed up a brown wash now using Agrax Earth Shade, Army Painter Strong Tone and some Lamia Medium. Um, I've put the ratio at the top of the screen but two parts to Agrax, one part Army Painter and eight parts to the Medium. Um, this just gives it a nice flow and the Army Painter Strong Tone's in there just to make it a little bit darker. I go ahead and apply this to all the bark areas of the model. It's it's sort of a mixture between a wash here and a glaze because I'm using it to sort of soften the the transitions on the the tops of the bone and bark. And you'll you'll see me do that shortly on the uh, on the clip. If you spot the wash starting to pool anywhere, 
just make sure you, you pull it out and, and spread it around. You don't want to um, get any sort of wash tide marks building up in areas. And here you can see I've used it as a, as a bit of a glaze towards the tops of the, um, the bones just to help soften in the airbrushing. I do the same here with the wash, use it to get the sockets on the eyes and then use it as a glaze towards the top of the model and um, just to again soften in the airbrushing. I'm using one of the old GW wash uh, brushes, it's the one with the purple sort of tip on the, uh, on the reverse end of it. Um, you can't actually get these anymore but if you have one and you've taken good care of it they, uh, they do last. The eye sockets weren't quite dark enough for my liking so I've, uh, I've given them an extra little bit of a, a wash in there. I think you get the idea with where I'm going with this, so I've sped the, um, the video up by, uh, by double just to go through this bit a bit quicker. And remember to get in on the hand and amongst all the fingers around the bottom and the knuckles, and then uh, you'll see in a minute I'll be doing the loincloth, make sure you uh, remember the back of that.
I've made a simple um, cork base with sand. I um, positioned the model on it before I put the sand on just so that when I glue him down his feet are flush to the, uh, the cork and obviously where I've got the cocktail sticks in the model at the moment I'll pull them out and replace them with metal pins and then um, give it a nice secure uh, fixing to the base. I've applied charred brown just to the, um, the whole base here. Uh, keep it sort of in the same tone as the rest of the model. This was the shade we used earlier on. I normally do all my basing uh, towards the end of a project, um, but with this one, I was waiting for the washes to dry, so I just went ahead and put this first. Uh, base coat down on the on the base while they were drying. In order to get increased definition um, in the bark, I've mixed up some uh, charred brown with a little bit of uh, medium just so it flows a bit nicer. And I'm painting it into the crevices. So instead of washing them with like a heavy, heavy wash, I'm painting uh, into the into the recesses instead. Um, I think this just gives you a tidier look overall. I've also painted into the eye sockets and um, putting the wash in earlier on didn't quite get them dark enough so I've gone back and I put those in by hand again. There are quite a few of these carvings across the model so um, have a little look around and make sure you get them on the backs of the hands, the backs of the wrist plates, the shin guards, obviously the head. I don't think there's any on the loincloth from memory, but um, just make sure you get in all of those.
you can see here the wash has dried a little bit shiny in some of the crevices so I'll um, be sure to hit that up with some matte varnish towards the end. So I'm now using Vallejo Model Air UK PRU Blue and this is quite a nice grey blue I'm using it to base coat all the areas where I'm going to do like a spirity, a spirit sort of glow.
this color does have quite nice coverage over dark colors but you still may need to do uh, two layers of it around here it's not like a thick base coat or anything Once all the spirit areas are base coated, it's time to get the airbrush back out and go with a light sea blue and just start putting a, a glow effect around um, towards the bottom areas of the uh, the spirit. Well, call it spirit, it's meant to be bark I believe, but I've, I've gone a different way with it. Um, a little bit of overspray here onto the actual bark itself is not bad because it will give you that sort of uh, lit glow. Um, Often called uh, OSL, which is Object Source Lighting. Um, you often see this on power weapons, plasma weapons. Um, it's more prominent in um, sort of uh, futuristic, like 40k. If you're not using an airbrush, uh, some light dry brushing um, will actually give you a, a similar sort of effect. Um, it won't look quite the same, but if you don't have access to an airbrush, there are alternative ways of doing this.
I've applied a thin down uh, non oil across all of these ghost spirity areas that I've been doing um, just to darken up and give them a bit bit more depth uh, when it dries it will look a bit more a bit more gray um, as like I said it is quite thin and you may also notice here that I have taken it straight from the pot um, it's not straight out of the pot this is um, a three pre thinned mix that I've actually put in a pot um, a lot of my washes I already have a lot of medium in thin down for for quicker use So once the wash has dried, it's back to the light sea blue on the airbrush again, um, just to brighten up some of the areas that have been darkened down a bit too much. Um, the wash will give a sort of a black line effect between the bark and the spirit. So you can skip the stage of doing the wash, but I find that it does actually um, sort of offer a bit of sort of variance in colour um, and gives you a defining line. Um, like I said though you can you can skip it if you want to.
I go back over the um, the braided beard again a little bit here just to um, just to soften the colour a bit because it is a bit dark at the moment. switching out to white through the airbrush and um, this is where you start to get the the glow effect becomes a bit more um, apparent on the model um, again a little bit of overspray onto some of the barks not too bad here um, it will give that sort of uh, natural lighting effect um, although if you do go a bit too heavy on it um, if it's thin enough you can quickly just rub it off but I would recommend um, just going back over it with a a glaze later on to, to sort of darken it back to the original colour. You'll notice here that it goes off camera a little bit while I'm trying to get the uh, the white down. It's quite hard to get it in the angle I want it while keeping it in the screen with the airbrush at the right angle to not hit any other parts of the model. Um, again, this will come with practice and the Star Drake videos a lot better. Here I'm applying a glow effect to the bottom of the beard and towards the sides of it. You don't actually really want to hit the, the braid part itself because we're going to do that with a brush shortly. I do give either side of the braid a slight white though because we're not going to be painting too much of that and the back of it will be pretty much hidden um, out of sight anyway because it'll be pushed sort of flush to the model um, but try and keep the front a little bit darker so that when we paint on the line shortly you'll be able to see them um, and make sure you get the mouthpiece here because um, that will glow through the hole in the jaw which you can um, see here. You can also see here I'm doing some little test sprays on my thumbnail 
um, this is just to make sure um, there's no spidering or splattering and that the um, the nozzle's not got any blockages or anything you don't want to go in and paint a fine detail with the airbrush only for it to magically clog all of a sudden and, and spray uh, too hard or you'll find that you'll push the trigger not enough will come out you'll push it harder and then you'll have to repaint that whole piece so just a little test spray onto something um, I just use my, my thumbnail like I said I'm quite happy of how the glow effect's shaping up on this um, on this model. So uh, once we're done with that, it's time to move on and, and start painting the lines onto the beard. Um, I'm going to split the video here um, and do a part two because it's already an hour in now, um, and then the second part is also an hour. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed this first part, and your feedback is uh, greatly appreciated. Um, just let me know whether you you want shorter. Um, videos and some of the steps. I have tried to trim some of them down a bit. The original video I shot was about six hours long so I have taken quite a bit out. If you have enjoyed the video please like and uh, subscribe to my channel. I will be adding uh, more and more videos now. This is going to be um, quite a big project for me. Thanks.